Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances of the Rishar Prabhupada. Welcome to Bodhi's Draw Morning Class. This morning we will be hearing and discussing from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adit Lila, Chapter 2, Verse 56, and the chapter is entitled Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we are happy to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami here with us, who will be giving the class. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you and all glories to Sri Prabhupada. Adbo, can you hear me? Yes, Marge. Very clear and nice. Today is Balaram's appearance day. Yes, Marge. Can we switch to the topic? Yes, Marge. Whatever you want. At your service, Marge. I thought the devotees would be more edified by hearing about Balaram today. Absolutely, Marge. What I am completely agree with you. As you please, Marge. Okay. I think that's what we'll go for. Marge, so um, sh shall I stop sharing and we'll just go to the gallery view? Uh, we can. I'll give you another verse for sharing. Sure, Marge. CC. CC. Um, Adi Lila, Chapter 5. Any particular verse, Marge, or just this part? I'm going to just read until I get to a, a verse and then I'll begin to. No problem, Marge. No problem. We'll start with verse number one. And I'll probably go up to about um, verse number 10. Okay, so uh, I'll just uh, read the translations until I get to the verse. Okay. Yes, Marge. Jai Jaya Sri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Dvaita Chandra, Jaya Gaurabhakta Vinda. So this is from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Glories of Nityananda, Lord Nityananda Balaram, verse number one. Let me offer my obeisances. The Lord Sri Nityananda, Sri the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose opulence is, is wonderful and unlimited. By his will, even a fool can understand his identity. All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all glories to Lord Nityananda, all glories to Advaita Chari, and all glories to all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I have described the glory of Sri Krishna Chaitanya in six verses, now in five verses, I shall describe the glories of Lord Nityananda. Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna is the fountain head of all incarnations. Lord Balaram is his second body. Srila Prabhupada's report. Lord Sri Krishna, the absolute personality of Godhead, is the primeval Lord. The original form of Godhead and his first expansion is Lord Balaram. Personality of Godhead can expand himself in innumerable forms. The forms that have unlimited potencies are called swamsa. And the forms that have limited potency, the living entities are called bibinamsa. These two are one and the same identity. They differ only in form. Lord Balaram is the first bodily expansion of Krishna and he assists in Lord Krishna's transcendental pastimes. Lord Balaram is a swamsa expansion of the Lord and therefore there's no difference in potency between Krishna and Balaram. The only difference is in their bodily structure. As the first expansion of Godhead, Balaram is the chief deity among the first quadruple forms, and he is the foremost assistant of Sri Krishna in his transcendental activities. The original Lord Krishna appeared in Navadvipa as Lord Chaitanya. 
and Balaram appeared with him as Lord Nityananda. May Sri Nityananda Ram be the object of my constant remembrance. Sankarsana, Seshanag, and the Vishnus, and the Karna Ocean, Garbadak Ocean, yeah, yeah, are his plenary portions and portions of his plenary portions. Yeah. Sharup Damodar Goswami has recorded this verse in his diary to offer his respectful obeisances to yeah. Lord Nityananda Prabhu. This verse also appears as the seventh of the first 14 verses in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Lord Balaram is the original Sankar, Sankarsana. He assumes five other forms to serve Lord Krishna. He, help, he himself helps in the pastimes of Lord Krishna, and he does the work of creation and four other forms. I'll read, it, I'll read the, uh, the Bengali on this verse here. Shristyatka seva tandra anjanara palana seisa rupa kara krishnera vivida sevana. He executes the orders of Lord Krishna in the work of creation in the form of Lord Shesha. He serves Krishna in various ways. Srila hmm. Prabhupada's purport. According to expert opinion, Balaram, as the chief of the original quadruple form, is also Sankarsana. Balaram is the first expansion of Krishna, expands himself in five forms, Mahasankarsana, Karana de Dayadiv, Karana de Sai, Garbodaka Sai, Shirodaka Sai, and Shesha. These five plenary portions are responsible for both the spiritual and material cosmic manifestations. In these five forms, Lord Balaram assists Lord Krishna in his activities. The first form of these forms are responsible for the cosmic manifestation, whereas Sesha is responsible for personal service to the Lord. Sesha is Kualananta, or unlimited, because he assists the personality of Godhead in his unlimited expansions by performing in unlimited varieties of services. Sri Balaram is the servant of Godhead who serves Krishna in all affairs of existence and knowledge. Lord Nityananda Prabhu, who is the same servant of Godhead, Balaram performs the same service to Lord Garanga by constant association. Om Gyanti Midandasya Ganajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gadavena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Vadaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutalai Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvase Sasunya Vadi Vastyatya Deya Sitarine Vansha Kaupa Taru Vishya Ipasindu Bhai Bacha Patitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna, Jai Tanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara, Siva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So, um, it's described that the Lord has unlimited manifestations of himself. And the categories are given here, Swamsa, Vibhinamsa. And then there's also categories within the categories, Prakash and uh, Vilas. And so there's different manifestations of the Godhead to perform the activities both in the material and spiritual realm. Balaram is the foundation by which all of these other activities expand. So Krishna's first manifestation of himself is Sri Balaram. Now, we understand by authority that both Balaram and Krishna are eternal. 
So therefore, when we say Krishna expands, it doesn't mean that Balaram all of a sudden now becomes manifested. He is eternally manifested and eternally active. It's just for the sake of understanding that at a particular point, Lord Balaram uh, starts to perform certain activities for in relationship to the Lord. He is eternally existing. And his activities are also eternal. As it says here, he serves Lord Krishna in all affairs of existence and knowledge. And so we see uh, the, uh, there is what is called Sandini, Sanvit, and Ladini. These are the three categories of the uh, existence of the personality of Godhead, which he manifests is all his knowledge and energy in. And he also performs his pastimes, which is the Ladini energy. So in his existence, he maintains everything and creates everything and maintains it. In his knowledge form, persistent in his knowledge feature, some bit, he knows everything, past, present, future, and everything, uh, everything, all knowledge is known by the Lord through his some bit potency, through the Sandini potency, he maintains existence and his uh, potency as Ladini, he performs various pastimes for his transcendental pleasure. Uh, here we see Balaram actually is the personality who expands all of these different energies into place. So for the sake of understanding, we explain that Lord Balaram is the initial manifestation of Krishna's so Balaram, and, Balaram expands from Krishna, and then Balaram expands further into the, uh, what is called the Narchatar Vyuha, which consists of Vasudev, Sankarsana, uh, Pradyumna, and Aniruddha. Sometimes there are, they are manifestations of the, the, the energies of the Lord in the, in the form of the Lord's weapons, the chakra, the gada, or the club, the um, lotus flower, and the conch shell, which the Lord Lord Narayan forms hold in different positions throughout the different spiritual realms, and each of them has their own planet. So Lord Balaram is actually expanding in the form of these different Narayan features. And of course, it mentioned from, from the chapter of Yuha, Narayan manifests himself. In other words, he expands. And Narayan makes up the entire spiritual world. So the entire spiritual world is an energy of Lord Balaram. And then from the Narayan feature, the second chapter of Yuha expands again, Vasudeva, Sankarsana, Pradyumna, and Aniruddha. And from the second Sankarsana, uh, Mahavishnu expands and then the material creation starts to unfold. So here you see how Balaram is involved with all aspects of coordinating everything of the spiritual and material manifestations. And sometimes he is also called the, the, the God who is serving. There is God who is served and God who is serving. So we also understand that Lord Balaram serves Lord Krishna by performing these different functions, both in the spiritual and material world. It's also mentioned that the manifestations of the uh, mercy feature of the Lord, that is the spiritual masters, the pure spiritual masters, are expansions of Lord Balaram. So we see from that on that connection that Lord Balaram, he is a, he is serving the Lord in different ways, and we'll go into some of that in detail a little later in the discussion. But here you find that the the Guru manifestations or the pure devotee manifestations are actually coming from Balaram Tattva or Guru Tattva, which is also Balaram Tattva. Because Balaram plays many roles in his uh, in his uh, service to the supreme personality of Godhead, 
he also manifests himself in in different ways according to the different relationships with the supreme personality of God. And that is the five rasas. So in the neutrality ras, he becomes the Lord's shoes. He becomes the Lord's bedstead. He becomes the Lord's RT paraphernalia. He also becomes the Lord's Murdanga, the Kirtan paraphernalia, in the mood of Lord Nityananda. He also is, in some sense, he's the Lord, Lord's umbrella. He's the Lord's clothes. And he is, in some cases, but not all, the Lord's jewelry. So all of these are expansions of the internal energy of the Lord for, to assist the Lord in his pastimes and for his personal pleasure also. So that's Lord Balaram in his neutral ras. In Dasya ras, he finds different ways to serve the Lord. In Sakya ras, he becomes the brother of the Lord and he serves the Lord as a friend. In the Vatsalya Ras, he becomes the, he's still in the role of older brother of the Lord, but he takes the position of a parent. So he protects or watches over Krishna in the mood of parental affection in Vatsalya Ras. And little known, but it's also mentioned, he also manifests, manifests himself in the form of the younger sister of Srimati Radharani. So in the younger sister of Srimati Radharani, he is known as Ananga Manjari, who serves Lord Krishna by performing the activities of Madhurya Ras or having conjugal love with the Lord. So you see the Lord Balaram performs activities in all the five Rasas to give pleasure and assistance to Lord Sri Krishna. As the Lord manifests his different incarnations, the Lord comes along with his brother, Balaram. In the incarnation of Lord Ram, he became Lakshman, the younger brother. In the manifestation of Krishna, he becomes Balaram, his original form, as the uh, older brother. And in the manifestation as Lord Garanga, he becomes Lord Dityananda, also the older brother. So you see, in being the, in the older brother's role, he plays the role also of Vatsaya Ras. In the younger brother's role, when he was Lakshman, he didn't play that role of Vatsaya Ras because younger brother doesn't play the role of parent in that, in that particular manifestation. So you see how Lord Balaram, he performs all of these different activities just for the pleasure of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As it's mentioned, there's no difference between Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram. And sometimes it's given a little bit of a comparison that Krishna is compared to a blackish rain cloud during the monsoon season, his color, and Balaram is compared to a beautiful spring cloud, which comes in the spring season. And his, he is whitish. He is a pure white color. Um, as Krishna likes to dress in a blue, blue color. And he has a yellow dirty dhoti with a blue top piece. Uh, and, but in... Uh, um, when Balaram comes, and Balaram also, Balaram dresses in, uh, he dresses in white and blue. Yeah, white and blue is Balaram's colors. And the Lord Krishna is yellow and blue, like that. So these different manifestations of the Godhead. So there was one time there was a discussion between two devotees that uh, two very, very senior devotees. <laughs> uh, one was saying that the only difference between Krishna and Balaram is that Krishna, uh, Balaram is of the whitest complexion and Krishna 
is the blackish complexion. And then another person was saying, yes, that is true, but there's another difference. Only Krishna has relationships with Srimati Radharani, not Balaram. So there was an, somewhat of an argument. A third senior devotee came and heard the argument and went to Srila Prabhupada and explained, this is what's going on. This devotee is saying, it's just the only difference is in the color. The other one saying, yes, that's true, but there is another difference, Krishna with Radharani. And so he presented it to Srila Prabhupada and Prabhupada said, he pointed to the first argument and said, well, he's right. And he pointed to the second argument and said, she's right, because it was a lady arguing with the Radharani point. And then, and he said, but then he said to Prabhupada, how can both be right? And Prabhupada said, you're also right. <laughs> So Prabhupada said, he's right, she's right, and you're also right. <laughs> and he left it at that. So this is the nature of the absolute truth, is that the apparent contradictions manifest themselves in the spiritual realm as not being contradictory, but just being right from different angles of vision. That's all. So this is a nice little interesting point. Uh, Prabhupada also posed a question one time. He said that, uh, um, who is stronger, Krishna or Balaram? And then the devotees would say, well, Bala means, means strength and Rama means pleasure. Balarama means one who takes pleasure in his strength. So he's stronger. And others would say, well, it's actually Krishna's stronger because he's the source of everything, including Balaram, therefore he must be strong. And Prabhupada heard many arguments and then Prabhupada said, actually, the answer is not in any of these. If you go to the Krishna Balaram temple or in many places where you see deities of Krishna Balaram, you'll see that Lord Balaram is leaning his left elbow onto the shoulder of Lord Krishna, and he's leaning in that direction. Krishna is holding up Balaram. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, yes, Balaram, uh, Krishna is actually more stronger by the indication of the way the deities are positioned, particularly in Sri Vrindavan Dham. And so there are many, many wonderful you know, pastimes of Lord Balaram um, being the manifestation of the also, of the different rasas, he performs activities in different rasas. Both Krishna and Balaram play on the flute. Uh, sometimes we don't see that, but actually there is one beautiful verse in the 10th uh, canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. If you go to that chapter, this was also a, a, an argument that came up as 10th canto chapter number 21. Someone was saying, oh, no, Balaram does not play on the flute. Only Krishna plays on the flute. Where do you get this idea that Balaram plays on the flute? But here we find Krishna, yeah, that one. And you go to verse number seven. So uh, it says, the cowherd girl says, oh, friends, those eyes that see the beautiful faces of the son of Maharaj Nanda are certainly fortunate. As these two sons enter the forest surrounded by their friends driving the cows before them, they hold their flutes to their mouths and glance lovingly upon the residents of Vrindavan. For those who have eyes, we think there is no greater object of vision. So here we see, uh, the gopis that spoke this particular verse are actually seeing that both Krishna and Balaram enter into forest, playing on their flute, attracting all of the gopis. Krishna has his own set of gopis and Balaram has his own set of gopis. They do not mix. 
when Balaram wanted to come to Vrindavan just to come one time, this was in the spring season, in the month of Vaishaka, Balaram came and all of his gopis came to see him and Balaram performed rasa dance during that time. After the rasa dance, Balaram was feeling very tired. So he wanted some, some beverage to relax him and to give him refreshment. And so uh, then Varuni, Varuni is a manifestation of the daughter, daughter of the god Varuna, or the, his daughter is called Varuni. And she comes in the form of this beverage, which is a slightly intoxication, and it gives refreshment. So she appeared to give pleasure to Lord Balram. And Balram drank, and then he again performed some activities with his gopis. And then he decided that he wanted to take bath in the Jamuna. So along with his gopis, he went to the bath. But Jamuna was not present. She had hidden herself from Balaram, thinking, who is this person? She did not recognize him for who he is. And so she hid herself. Balaram became very much uh, uh, disturbed by her activity. And he chastised her and saying, if you don't appear before me, then I will take your stream and cut it into and so he took his plowshare, which is his immediate share, and he dug it into the Jamuna River and started pulling her in different directions. So now you see Jamuna has many tributaries. And this is all due to Balaram. So, but actually, and then of course, when Jamuna realized that who he was, she had I realized she had committed a great offense not recognizing his position. So she appeared with folded hands as a beautiful picture. You can see how she offers her obeisances to Lord Balaram, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and offers any services that he wants. Balaram wants to bathe with his, the, with his gopis in the water. She provides beautiful, beautiful flowing fresh water for Balaram to enjoy, and Balaram enjoys with his gopis. Balaram's gopis are a little bit younger than Krishna's gopis, but they are also, uh, they're known as gopis and they are, uh, they are uh, exclusively perform rasa dance only with Balaram, not with Krishna and vice versa. Krishna's gopis do not go with Balaram like that. Um, so during that time, also, there were many, many wonderful pastimes. Um, <laughs> there are unlimited pastimes of Krishna Balaram performing together. Uh, we see one particular pastime, how Balaram appears to be bewildered when this big, powerful demigod, Lord Brahma, he saw Krishna he didn't see, he heard, he actually heard that Krishna had killed this big vicious demon named Agasura, who was in the form of a snake, who was huge. When he opened his mouth, his mouth was one mile high from bottom to top. <clears throat> and the cowherd boys had run into the mouth thinking it was a cave. But some of them knew it wasn't the cave. They were thinking, it doesn't matter. Krishna always saves us anyway. He looks like a demon. Let's go play inside. So they did. And then Krishna hadn't been paying attention to what his friends were doing. He was looking in another direction. Then he turned and he saw, oh, my God, dude, the boys are running into this mouth of this demon. But the, the, the uh, Agha, sorry, he kept his mouth open because he wanted to get Krishna to come in. So Krishna came in and then he closed his mouth. But then Krishna expanded himself in the mouth of Agasur and broke through the top of the head. And then the demon actually died and his soul went straight up into the sky, hovered there and then went right into the body of Krishna. He received Sarupya Mukti, 
which was very rare for a demon to get. Most of the demons get sohuja mukti, merging into the bodily effulgence of the demon. But this particular demon, when Krishna ran into his mouth, he understood momentarily that Krishna was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he saw the form of Krishna within his mind just at the same time that Krishna killed him. And so because he meditated on Krishna's transcendental form, only for a second, he received Sahuja, uh, Sarupya Mukti, getting the same form. So the demigods performed a big kirtan in the heavenly planets when after Krishna, after Krishna had killed Avasara. And Brahma was thinking, what is going on? He came out of his abode to see what was going on. And he saw how they were celebrating the killing of this demon. And then he saw Krishna, but he couldn't recognize Krishna as his object of worship. And later on, when Krishna was playing with his friends on the bank of the cow, uh, on the banks of the Jumuna, Krishna loves to play with his friends. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, although he is the power of all powers, nothing is in existence without his energies. And everything in existence is simply a manifesting manifestation of his energies. Uh, Lord Brahma came to see who is this person. And he decided to play a little trick on Krishna, thinking he could bewilder Krishna. And he stole the calves and cowherd boys. And Krishna had wanted, gone to chase after the cows who had run away. When Krishna came back, he understood this was the work of this powerful demigod. So he simply expanded himself into the boys and the calves to look exactly with all of the characteristics, all of the idiosyncrasies, everything about the boys and the calves were exactly the way it was. But now they were exp direct expansions of Krishna. And uh, this went on for a whole year. And during that time, Balaram was seeing all of these boys and calves, and he was seeing that the cows who had other calves were now running after these calves with complete absorption, thinking, what is the cows don't are not acting like, they're not acting the way they usually do. They usually go for their younger calves, but now they're going for their older calves. And with such such love and then he was seeing how all of the cowherd boys were all all the mothers of the cowherd boys were now seeing that their cow their sons were not different than krishna and they were showing complete and absorption in their affection for their sons and balaram was seeing this he was thinking what is this i never saw it. Is there some yogini who meant, came into Vrindavan and she's placed some mystic spell on all of us? But then after reasoning for so many things, he finally said, he went to Krishna, he said, Krishna, what's going on? <laughs> and Krishna, then of course, then he concluded that it couldn't, it couldn't be anything else but the energy of Lord Krishna. And so Krishna explained the whole situation to him. So apparently, we use the word with, with some emphasis, apparently a Balaram got bewildered. So sometimes it appears that Balaram is even bewildered by Krishna. And sometimes they took opposite sides, just like during the battle of Kurukshetra. When um, Doryadon came to Balaram to learn how to fight with a club, and he, he, he became expert at club fighting. Although he was a, the son of Dhritarashtra who tried to, you know, falsely usurp the kingdom from the Pandavas, still he was a family member and Balaram gave him, Balaram gave him whatever he wanted in terms of art, 
fighting art, and he taught him how to fight. So at the end of the battle, after the battle with Kurukshetra was practically over, there was a fight between Bhima and uh, um, Diodhana. And no one could defeat the other. Bhima was much more powerful by physical strength, and Diodhana was more expert in the art of fighting with a club. So the fighting went on, the fighting went on. And then Balaram came and he said to them, you know, do you know you're expert in fighting with a club and Bhima, he's more powerful than you. So the fight will simply go on, for, but no one will win. But they had such enmity towards each other, especially Bhima, when he, uh, he understood that Deodhana had, uh, and had what he had done towards the Pandavas, he wanted to kill Deodhana. And Krishna stepped in and cheated and told Bhima that the only way you can kill him is you have to break the rules of Kshatriya Dharma by smashing him in his hips, which is against the rules to hit below the waist but he smashed him in his hips and broke his hips and then ultimately he died. But before then, Balaram was trying to coax them, give up this fighting, but they didn't listen to Balaram. Then Balaram got disgusted and turned and then he went on pilgrimage for 20 years, going to many, many holy places. And that's nicely described throughout the Krishna book, the different places that Balaram went. He actually went to even to where he even went to. Uh, no, he didn't go to Jagannath Puri. He didn't want to go to Jagannath Puri because he knew he would see himself in his manifestation as, as a deity. And he didn't want to go and then therefore disturb the worship of the people there. So he simply avoided Jagannath Puri. But he went to one place, Nami Sharanya, where the sages were uh, performing different sacrifices. But there was one demon whose name was Balbala. And he was a he was a nasty demon. When the sages would perform their, their yagya, just at the time when they were concluding their yagya, he would come and, and he would pour all kinds of nasty substances on their on their sacrifices, blood, pus, urine, and stool, and he would defile the whole sacrifice. And this was becoming a problem. So right around that same time, just before Balaram come, they performed a yagya to um, honor the head of the sacrifice, which was Romaharshan Sutta. The so Romaharshan Sutta was given the position of being the leader amongst the sages of Nami Sharanya. So he had just taken that position, honor was being given to him. And right after that, Balaram appeared. And all of the sages in Nami Sharanya immediately got up and worshiped. Balaram honored his presence, spoke so many uh, beautiful words in the glorification. But Romaharsha and Sutta didn't do that. He continued to sit on his position as being the head of everyone. And when Balaram saw that, he became angry. And uh, he took a piece of kusa grass, which is a very sharp type of grass that grows in certain places. You can see it even today. Uh, kusa grass is actually, um, it's, uh, it's the hairs that fell from the body of Lord Varaha onto the earth after he picked the earth from the Garbhodaksai ocean. And his hairs fell onto the, onto the earth and grew as this grass known as kusa grass, which we use for various types of worship. So Balaram picked up this sharp grass and went and killed uh, Ramahar Shuta with that piece of grass the sages were aghast. They had just elected him as the head of the assembly, and now Balaram had killed him. <laughs> and so 
And they said to Balaram, Balaram, now what are we going to do? It seems like you have acted wrongly and therefore you have committed an offense. You're going to have to atone for that. <laughs> they said to Balaram, you have committed an offense. Of course, the Supreme Personality of Godhead can't commit an offense, but this is what they said. But then Balaram said, all right, if you want, I'll bring him back to life. No, no, no. We don't want you to do anything that you don't want to do. So, but, but uh, therefore, Balaram, they said, please, but now we are at a leader in our, our, our group here. We have no head, head, head sadhu. So Bal Balaram said, actually, his son is here, Sutta Goswami. And therefore, the son takes on the characteristics of the father. Therefore, Sutta Goswami is qualified to take the position. And so Sutta Goswami, and then we also understand from the, our own reading of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, how the sages of Namishirani were hearing from Sutta Goswami. So he was the son of Ramaharshan Swami. But why did Balaram kill him? Do you think Balaram was proud that he... Because he didn't get his honor, he became proud. No, it's because he understood that for one to sit on that position of respect and honor, one has to have certain qualities. And he did not have the quality of honoring the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore he was, what we say, proud of being in that position. So it's explained in that particular verse that uh, in that section, there is one particular verse which explains that um, that on a stage, a person will play a role. In that role, they become somebody different than who they actually are. And therefore, it becomes an act. So in the same way, the verse explains that actually Balaram could see he was not qualified to sit on the throne. It was simply a dramatic act. And therefore, he was removed by the mercy of Balaram. Like that. So it says that the characteristics of a great soul is what makes them a great soul. Their learning is one of their characteristics, but it's not the only characteristics. Humility, pridelessness, and honor and worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the main quality of all devotees. A devotee may have so many good qualities, but the main quality that makes a devotee of a devotee, he is absorbed and he is fixed on worshiping the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotional service. So these are some of the many pastimes with Lord Balaram. And there were many wonderful pastimes, just like when the cowherd boys were in Vrindavan and Krishna and Balaram were playing regularly. So the cowherd boys came to uh, Krishna and Balaram. Krishna and Balaram, there's a wonderful forest. Its name is Taliban. And on the, in that forest, there are these big, big trees, and they have the best of all fruit. It's called the Tao fruit. These fruits are so tasty and so nourishing. Well, please get these fruits for us. <laughs> we can't go because there is a big demon. His name is Denukasura. And he is a he is a servant of Kamsa and he guards these trees and this forest. And anybody who comes there, he kills them. <laughs> He's killed many. So we are afraid to go there, but we want these fruits. Can you go? So Krishna and Balaram wanted to satisfy their friends. So they went. And Balaram came. And Krishna was there. And Balaram started to shake one of the trees and the, some of the fruits were falling and Balaram picked up one fruit and started to eat it. And then Danuk, he started to, oh, who's in my forest? What's going on here? Oh, there he is. And so Bala, so he came, he's an ass. He's in the form of an ass. And so he was running full speed towards Balaram and he turned around and he, when he got to Balaram and kicked Balaram, really as hard as he could in the chest. But 
for Balaram, it was like somebody throwing a flower onto him. There was no, no effect. <laughs> and, but Balaram wanted to enjoy the fruit, so he started to eat. And then this demon decided to attack him again. And this time, Balaram didn't want to be bothered. So when he came, uh, Balaram just grabbed his hind legs with, with one hand and just swirled him and twirled him around at such high speed that he lost his life simply by being spun around. And then Balaram threw him up into the tree, one of the tall trees, and that hit the tall tree and the tree started to shake and this tree started to bend and then finally it broke and fell onto the other trees. And all of the different trees started to drop their different fruits being hit by this one tree that was thrown by Balaram and this big demon. And then he was dead and all the fruits were going on. And then all the cowherd boys and Krishna started to pick up. But then all of the followers of Dana Kasura, all his ass-like friends, they came and started to chase after Krishna and Balaram. And Krishna and Balaram were just enjoying the fruits. So when they came, they grabbed them by their hind legs and threw them up to the tree. And Srila Prabhupada describes in that particular situation that it was like a panoramic scene, all of these different asses who were different colors. They made a beautiful rainbow in the trees and all of these dead asses. <laughs> they were just like giving color to the forest. <laughs> And then Krishna and Balaram, one after another, were throwing them up, and then all, all the fruits were falling. And then they enjoyed the fruits nicely. And so one time they were narrating this particular pastime to, to uh, Srila Prabhupada. And they were describing, the Prabhupada said, just see, the cowherd boys are asking Krishna and Balaram for service. <laughs> They're asking Krishna and Balaram to serve them. But what Prabhupada was saying, this is the relationship between Krishna and the cowherd boys. Krishna likes to serve his friends and the friends like to serve Krishna. And so the, the cowherd boys will ask Krishna and Balaram to do things. And Krishna and Balaram will do it. And this is their loving relationship between them. So this is a nice, nice pastime. And another pastime where Balaram is directly involved was in uh, Palambasura. One particular demon who was a friend of Kamsa took the disguise of a cowherd boy in order to come and to kill Krishna uh, and Balaram. So uh, Krishna recognized this cowherd boy. You could see him. <laughs> And therefore, Krishna made a plan. So he said to Balaram, let's gather all the cowherd boys and let's play our favorite game. Okay, so they got together and they start playing. And the loser of the game will be two sides. I'll be on one side and you'll be on the other side. You'd have your boys and I'll have my boys. And the losers have to carry the winners on their shoulder. So this, this cowherd boy who was a demon took the side of Krishna. And Krishna's side won, Balaram's side lost. So Balaram had to carry a cowherd boy, and it just happened to be this demon in the form of a cowherd boy. He put him on his back, and he was going with Balaram. They were just supposed to play around, but the, the, this demon decided to kill Balaram and take him a distance away. And as he was running and running, Balaram was thinking, whoa, what? This cowherd boy, where is he? Oh, and then he, then he realized this cowherd boy, and then he took the form, his actual form, as this big, monstrous demon who was completely black in color. He said he was like the color of carbon. His eyes were like red, like blazing sockets, and his teeth were like fierce swords. And so when Balaram saw that, he took his fist and boom, punched him in the head. <laughs> Cracked his head open and you know, all the 
came out of his head and said it looked like red axi that was flowing from a mountain. <laughs> and, and the demon was dead. Adiwo! The body's like when demons get killed. <laughs> so, uh, this particular, these two particular pastimes are very instructive for each and, one, each and every one of us because they represent certain anarthas. Uh, Balaram, who is actually uh, a manifestation of Guru Tattva, who helps the devotee overcome their anarthas. So these two demons were killed by Rama. And mostly all of the other demons were killed by Krishna. It says that these other demons also represent some of the anarthas or bad qualities that block one's progress in devotional service. So it says that when the, the anarthas that we have that are represented by the demons Krishna kills, we simply pray to Krishna. And by Krishna's mercy, we can overcome these particular anarthas. But there are two anarthas. One is the the ignorance, because an, an ass, an ass demon represents stupidity or ignorance, simply works hard, simply carrying someone else's load for a little bit of grass, which is available anywhere and everywhere. So an ass is not considered a very intelligent animal. Now he's considered a, the, the fool of all of the animals. And so he represents ignorance and working hard for, for material gain, that's all. And therefore, uh, when devotees are, what we say, afflicted by these types of anartha, um, they have to not only pray to Balaram, but they have to remove the anartha by their own endeavors. In other words, one has to practice devotional service and develop the qualities to overcome these anarthas, particularly ignorance of the bodily conception of life, thinking that I am this body, which is the basis of all ignorance in, in, uh, in life. As soon as we think I am this body and all the activities I perform in relationship to the body, is actually me and meant for my enjoyment. This is, this is the ass-like mentality. And so Balaram, who is Guru Tattva, can we pray to Lord Balaram, please remove this ignorance and give us the knowledge of our position as eternal servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And working hard for these material things. And you see people in the material world, they simply work hard for what? To get clothing, to get food, to get shelter. Where all of these things are automatically provided by Krishna simply by engaging in devotional service. One doesn't have to work hard for their maintenance. And the other demon, Palambasura, he represents licentiousness and uh, wrong relationships with the opposite sex. And so Balaram also helps to remove that with the mercy, with, in other words, with his mercy, along with the endeavor that the, the, the devotee has to manifest in order to overcome these things. In other words, when these other anarthas, and I'll just repeat this point because it's important for us to understand, the other anarthas that are represented by the demons killed by Krishna are overcome by the power of Krishna's mercy when we pray to Krishna. But the one with Balaram, we have to not only pray to Balaram, but we have to endeavor to remove these things by our own efforts, by the efforts that we make based on the knowledge we receive from our spiritual master. Well, that's the difference. So these two demons are unique because they present our own endeavors for self-realization. 
Uh, so these are a couple of the demons that Balaram killed. There are many, many other demons that Balaram killed. And then there are many, many incidents with Krishna and Balaram like that. Um, and these are just some of the few of the many, many pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We can simply hear these pastimes, in particular today on the appearance day of the Lord. Um, and when we do, by we get the special mercy of Lord Balaram. And when you get the special mercy from Lord Balaram, the path of devotional service is wide open. And uh, there are many, many wonderful pastimes, uh, but we will stop here and see if there's any comments and questions on the Supreme Personality of God and on his appearance day as Sri Balaramji. He is also known as Sri Nityananda and Lakshman. They are all non-different manifestations of the personality of Godhead who serves the Lord, who is the Lord, who serves the Lord in his different features. Thank you so much, Maj, for such a wonderful class and actually taking us on this journey of Sri Balaram's uh, pastimes and, uh, you know, amazing feats. It was really sweet hearing that. I would like to ask devotees if any questions, any, uh, you know, comments, any clarification, please do jump right in and, you know, raise your hand. Yes, Raj, please go ahead, Prabhu. Can we go back to the, um, stop the share screening? Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. okay, there we go. Hey, Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories uh, to you. Uh, Raj, can you tell me, please, how can I best, how, what is the best way that I could please Lord Balaram? Hmm. Well... Let's see, there's, the Lord is pleased by devotional service to Krishna. So if, if you're, if say you say you, say you have Jagannath deities, you have Krishna, Balaram and Subhadra there. So if you serve Jagannath really nicely, Lord Krishna is very pleased. And that's one of the ways. For direct service to Balaram, or more, more, more direct service, is that Balaram, hey, on his appearance day, we offer him the various types of foodstuffs. We cook a nice feast for him. And one of the things we should offer him is a bowl full of honey. Honey is very much liked by Lord Balaram. Uh, so we used to do that. And when I was in Nuvandavan on that day, we would always offer honey to Lord Balaram like that. And that would be one of the offerings. And the devotees would really try to get that as the Maha <laughs> Okay. Thank but when the devotees would take it, they weren't like Balaram. They, they would get a little over intoxicated and that was it. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> so offering that, yeah. Let's see. Um, offer him a nice feast on his appearance day. Bring the devotees together and uh, either go to the temple or have a program and glorify Lord Balaram, do puja, cook a feast, have someone there who can speak the glories of Lord Balaram. And simply by hearing about that, we become fully purified. His pastimes are not a part of this world. They take one's mind into the realm of transcendence. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Maharaj. I should try yeah. to do as much as possible. Read about Balaram. His, we have the Chaitanya Charitamrita. We began that fifth chapter of the Adi Lila. It's a very long chapter. 
there's much to it. We can also learn more about, uh, and we can honor, we also honor Lord Nityananda on this day also, because Nityananda and Balaram were not different. Um, anyone who says or thinks, even thinks that Balaram and Nityananda are different, they're called Pashandi. Pashandi means they're atheists. <laughs> it's the same person in two different forms. That's all. There's, they are non-different. Nityananda is Balaram. And there are two forms of the same person. There's no difference. When Balaram was here, he killed the demons. When Nityananda was here, he spread the glories of Lord Chaitanya's mercy in the form of chanting the holy name to destroy the demoniac mentality. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hadi, hadi. That was a really nice question, Prabhu. Such a sweet and sincere question. Thank you for asking that on this auspicious day. Any questions from devotees? Any um, you know, clarification, please uh, do raise your hand so that we can catch. Yes, Prabhu, please go ahead, Diptesh Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, thank you very much for this wonderful uh, class, uh, the explanation of the understanding of uh, Balram Tattva and the Guru Tattva. Maharaj, uh, my question is Is there a difference between the mercy? manifestation from uh, Lord Balaram and the mercy manifestation coming from Srimati Radharani? <laughs> well, the rasas are different. <laughs> but generally, it's, it's done by rasa. But you can't say one is more merciful than the other because both are unlimitedly unmerciful. You can't measure that. <laughs> But if you want to get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, you need the mercy of Lord Nityananda. If you want to get the mercy of uh, Krishna, you get to need the mercy of Srimati Radharani. So the manifestations of the Lord who serve the Lord also are just uh, manifestations of his mercy in different forms. That's all. So the mercy of uh, Lord Balaram would be the mercy of engaging in devotional service. The mercy of Srimati Radharani in relationship to the devotees who worship him, that, that she brings them into the realm of Vrindavan. So mercy is there. Greater and smaller is not a, not a, not a good question. It doesn't even come into play. It's just that the mercy manifests in different ways, that's all. Thank you, Maharaj. Does that make sense? Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. So if you're in Sakyaras, you might be worshipping Krishna Balaram. If you're in Madhurya Ras, you'll be worshipping Radha Krishna. And in both cases, it's the unlimited mercy of the Supreme Personality of God. If you're inclined to Krishna Balaram, you'll, you'll worship in that way, or you'll be attracted in that way. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. That was a deep question, Prabhu. Thank you so much for answering that and asking that question. Thank you so much. Any questions from devotees? Any um, you know, clarification? Please do raise your hand because we have a lot of devotees. So I don't want to miss anybody out. Marj, I have a, uh, a question. I'm just curious because when you, and I'll just ask me Prachi the same question just now. When you were mentioning, Maharaj, that when one is in the mood of Sakiras, they worship Krishna Balaram. 
And when one is in the mood of Madhurya Ras, then they worship Radha Krishna. What um, when one is serving Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, what Ras is that, Maharaj? Just curious. Lord Nityananda, and that's Krishna Balaram also. Um, but then again, you also see within Lord Chaitanya, there is Gorgadadhar, which is Radha Krishna worship also. And that was, that, those deities were worshipped. There's a, there is Gorgadadhar deities. They, they're in Yoga Pit in Mayapur. And they were deities of uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He was in the mood of worshipping uh, Lord Chaitanya in the mood of Madhurya Ras because he is a gopi. And so he worshiped Gorgadhar, that was his personal deities. So you have that also in Lord Chaitanya, Gorgadhar. But we know mostly is Nityananda because Lord Chaitanya emphasized the Sankirtan movement. And so Lord Nityananda and Krishna ba and Balaram have come in order to spread the Sankirtan movement. So therefore it's Gornitai, which is Rajendra Nanda Naye, Sachi Suto Hoilo Se, Balaram Hoilo Nitai. The Rajendra Nandana, Ye, Sachi Suta. Rajendra Nandana is Krishna, Sachi Suta is Lord Chaitanya. No difference. Rajendra Nandana, Ye, Sachi Suta Hoilo Se. Balaram Hoilo Nitai. Balaram and yeah, so in that verse spoken by Naratam Das Thakur in that prayer, he shows no difference between Krishna and Balaram and Gor Nitai. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Any questions from devotees? Any? Hare Krishna Maharaj. He says about all the basins. I appreciate the power, but Thank I've you. heard it. I've heard a comment that one cannot get Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, without going through Balaram or in Gauri. One cannot get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya without the mercy of Lord Chananda. Yeah. Com comment on that. Tim? That's correct. Okay. But we say we we kind of emphasize that Lord Nityananda Balaram is the manifestation of Guru Tattva. So by following the instructions of Guru Tattva, which is to engage in devotional service, and the essence of devotional service is to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Mm. So Lord Nityananda, he's called Boro Sukhe Kabogai, Boro Sukhe Kabogai. What is that? Bode suke kabo gai, bode suke kabo. Sura bi kunde che, na mera kule che. Koda nitai, koda nitai. Koda means merchant. Nitai is a merchant. What does he do? He goes everywhere, establishes different shops. He's a merchant. He wants to make some money. So he's a businessman. He's a Gujarati. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so he, 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 he kind of sets up his little businesses all over the place. And he's got one product. It's the main product. And, but he's charging. And what is that charge? He's saying, here, I have what you're looking for. And, and the price is uh, you have to pay this much. So what is the price? Uh, well, if you want uh, $5 worth of uh, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, pay up. <laughs> so if you want $100 worth of the mantra, okay, I'm ready to receive it. But it's not currency, it's not the, uh, it's not the currency, it's the faith. So when you have faith in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and you chant with faith, then you actually are entering into the mood of, of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Faith that this name is non-different than Krishna. Faith that this name is all you need to purify your consciousness 
you have to go back home, back to Godhead. So when one starts to develop what is called namruchi or sweetness and tasting of the holy name, they then they, they enter into the realm of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu engages them in Sankirtan more and more. And then they get a taste when they, as they perform Sankirtan more and more, they develop higher and higher realizations of Krishna. And that Lord Chaitanya takes them to Sri Vrindavan Dham. And then he puts them at the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani, who is Prem Guru. She is the Guru of Prema. And then their devotional life expands into the realm of Sri Vrindavan Dham because Lord Chaitanya came to give us Vrindavan Dham. No one can enter into that realm of, of bhakti without the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. So then, then they get the chance to serve the Lord in that mood of Vrindavan through the Sankirtan movement. And then from their practice, then Lord Radharani engages them in serving her servants in different ways. And as they progress, and then Radharani is pleased with them, then Krishna glances upon that person, and then that person has achieved perfection <laughs> in the realm of Sri Vrindavan Dham. So it's, it starts with Guru, which is manifest, manifested as Lord Nityananda. And then the mercy of Lord Nityananda gets us to the supreme mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who delivers us to the supreme mercy of Srimati Radharani. He is non different than Radharani, but at the same time, he is teaching in the realm of Vrindavan Dham as being the perfection in devotional practice. And this is all centered around the Sankirtan movement. Goloka Prema Dan Harinam Sankirtan Ratin Jan Mino Kene Upai. This chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra has come from the spiritual world itself. Harinam Sankirtan is, is coming down from Radha and Krishna into the hearts of their representatives, the pure devotees of the Lord who distribute that mercy everywhere. So we, we make advancement by how much we are actually perfecting our service and our chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, both together. Because if you're chanting nicely, you're gonna to wanna to serve. <laughs> and if you're serving, you'll also get a taste for chanting. Those who don't do much service or hardly do any service, their chanting doesn't develop beyond a certain point. We should be engaged in service 24 hours a day. <laughs> that should be, that is the mood of, of Vrindavan. And then we can qualify to get the mercy of the residents of Vrindavan. Tulsi Devi also. She opens up the door to the mercy of Vrindavan. Worshiping Tulsi Devi. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, as, as, um, as, as you were sp um, speaking about devotional service and chanting, and, and you said that the more we do the serve, uh, devotional service, the more we get the taste for chanting. And the more we chant properly, then we have the taste for devotional service. And I've come across some situations, Maharaj, where, you know, devote, you know, a couple of devotees, you know, who are facing a lot of challenges in their material life. And they all, you know, and they try to do the best in chanting. And sometimes they increase the rounds you know, just to get the minds focused, to try to overcome the material challenges or try to use the chanting in a form of asking the Lord to relieve them from the material desires. But the taste for devotional services, you know, is kind of weak. Why does that happen, Maharaj? <laughs> Why is their taste weak? 
for devotional service, even though they're chanting the rounds, just, you know, like, you know, because they're they're going through so much material struggles and they're trying to chant the rounds, they're trying to, you know, rather than chant 16, they do 18. But at the same time, I'm thinking that if that's what they're trying to do, probably that should increase the taste for devotional service, but it's, but it's going the other way. Well, sometimes, and it may just be an administration thing where they're not engaged in the best possible way. One of the duties of the spiritual master is engage people according to their nature. And this is Prabhupada's program for Van Ashram. When you're engaged according to your nature, then you excel in your service and you become very creative, enthusiastic, and you expand your service. When we're given a service that we have to do, we do it. And many times we stay with it, but sometimes we find it difficult when we want to change services or do something different. So Prabhupada could see that. And therefore, that's why he said, why are so many devotees falling down, although they're chanting Hare Krishna? It's because they're not engaged properly. So on the highest platform, uh, one can do any service and excel in that service. But you can't say, Everyone starts from the highest platform. We come to that platform. So we try to look and see how best a person can be engaged. Anyone can do any service and you'll find that's there. But if you want to stay with a particular, because it's nice to perfect one particular service in Krishna consciousness and that way to offer something to the Lord. You may do many services, but try to perfect one aspect of devotional service and make that your offering to Krishna. And that will be that will be a chance for you to make much spiritual advancement. Find one particular service that really attracts you and make and perfect it to the ultimate. Learn about it, read about it associate with devotees who are also doing that service and just perfect that service. It's a nice way to offer Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Any questions from devotees on this wonderful class on the pastimes of Sri Balaram on this wonderful appearance day of Sri Balaram? Any thoughts, any reflections, any takeaways? Marge, if there's no question, Marge, would you like to uh, end with a round of chanting? I was hoping you would say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you would say yes, Marge, because I, I'm assuming that you're still in the U.S. <laughs> I'm in Charlotte now. <laughs> oh, howdy world. That's why I could, I could hear the birds. I said, that, I said, March has got to be in, not in the city or suburb, because I could hear the birds chirping in the background. <laughs> yeah, there, you know, we got a little bit of a few bushes out here for, uh, next to the window. <laughs> it's so sweet to hear that. <laughs> but I was hoping you could ask me to chat around, because I only finished 15 rounds and I was thinking I'll save the last one for the class. <laughs> oh, Hari Bol. Thank you, Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll, we'll begin. Okay. And uh, those of you who are in the Charlotte area, please come to our program tonight at the house of Abhiram uh, Saka. And there'll also be uh, initiation ceremony as part of the uh, glorification um, of Lord Balaram on his appearance day. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. All the best to Shri Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, uh, our flight got delayed and uh, finally it got cancelled. Uh, so we couldn't get any flight today. So uh, we booked a flight um, for tomorrow morning, Guru Maharaj. Oh, okay. Oh, I was thinking you were here already. <laughs> no, Guru Maharaj, um, our flight got delayed uh, last night due to bad weather here. Suddenly thunderstorms and big rain. So uh, we oh, tried sorry. to... Uh, sorry to hear that. I was thinking I was going to see you today. <laughs> sorry, Guru Maharaj. That's what oh. I want to inform you. Um, tomorrow morning, uh, we are flying again, Guru Maharaj. Today, we couldn't get any flight. Uh, okay. Well, we still have a whole weekend of events. So please yes, come here. Please yes, come. Guru. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we'll begin our japa. <laughs>